Welcome to AI Simplified. It's all about artificial intelligence. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Today we are going to do fraud detection with AI. Fraud detection is a very broad topic, but for the, this video and the upcoming videos, we are going to use two approaches of XGBoost and neural networks and compare how both of them perform. So first of all, to start, we need a fraud detection data set. So you can go to Google and search for a fraud detection data set. And there is this Kaggle data set. So those who don't know, Kaggle is a website where you have a lot of data sets for the data scientist and you can use these data sets for your work. Here you can get an overview about the data set for Today's task, we are going to use IEEE CIS fraud detection data set. As you can see, there is a price money of 20,000 that it was launched in a competition, research prediction competition. And yes, so let's go to the data and you can see that there are two tables, transaction and identity. And we have the trained CSV, both transaction and identity. And then we have a test table where we have to predict it. So we don't have the labels, whether it's right or wrong. So during this task, we will be using only the train set. You can see that this is 1.26 GB of data. You can just click I understand and agree. You can just press download all and the files will be downloaded. I have already downloaded the files in my system like zip. For today's videos, I'm going to use Colab. I personally like Colab because if there is a problem with the machine learning algorithm, if it crashes or it's taking too much time, it doesn't affect your local machine. So here you go to the file and create a new notebook for today's task. And as you can see, these are in zip. You can also use a third party application, zip extractor for extracting these files, but I don't prefer it because it will be taking too much time. and so we will be doing it in Colab only. And so first you have to connect it to the Colab and then you can go here and connect. Once the runtime is connected, you can also connect it to the your drive, which I'm gonna do now. And once you are connected it to your Google Drive, you can access these files in Colab. So, here we have the drive and there are our files. First we are going to do is import the library zip file. And then we are going to create a file names dot like this a list so that I can have both the files here so now I have uh, given it the copy path since we are not going to use test but we will just extract them to see what's inside them and just have a comparison so and that's trans transaction Right, so we have a list with uh, all the files location. Now we have to do is for, we have to go through these locations, all of them together, then we are going to open these files in read mode and then we are going to use a reference and then with this zip dot reference we are going to extract everything inside these files into this location so we have to provide a location where you want to extract these files I am going to extract everything in a new folder extract it and we will just run it and 
now you can see with this green arrow that it's running and it's extracting the file so what to do next we have to read these files so we are going to use import pandas spd which will import the pandas library for for reading the csv file so you can see here we have got the extracted file in the csv formats we have now imported the pandas library and then we have we are going to read these files like this and you have to give the locations so here we have the trace transaction file and then we can also copy paste it for identity file And then we have the test trans file, which we can do like pd dot read csv, and then copy and paste it. Copy path, and then test identity as well with dot read csv yes and just read the files then i am also gonna print how many what is the size of these files so like well, how much rows and columns we have so we can do train transaction section size and then i can just print the data frame name date trans dot PSV. sorry shape and similarly for the identity size although this information would be given on the kaggle as well but just we will do this to see and we will also do this for the test So it's done and then you can see that there are 590,000 rows and 394 columns in the train transaction and in the train identity and we have 144,233 and 41 columns. Let's see in the test. So you can see there is one column missing in the train transaction. That's the fraud whether it's the labels, whether it's a fraud or not fraud so we cannot use this test transaction and we want to little bit explore whether this is a biased or unbiased data set so i would be also be printing how the labels are distributed so for this i am using the mat dot library Put mat plot library dot py so you can see it can complete the code automatically you just need to press enter and then you have counts which is train label so we have this train trans right and then we have to do just is fraud and then we have can use value counts dot values so we, it will give us like a, a count of zero and one values for into this and then we want to plot it like this so it will give us a count of zero and one values we want to do is plot bar we want to plot a bar chart with we say we have zero and one values in the counts and then we have uh, as text what you want to have as labels on the x 
zero and one values only and then we do the plt dot show to show this so you can see we have this much so it's very biased so we have only very less fraud cases and then we have so much of this non-fraud cases so the data set is very biased i can also print the counts for you and you can see that it shows the counts is in the zero one format there are zero cases and there are only twenty thousand fraud cases in the whole data set so in the next video we will be doing pre-processing on this data set